out of that mindset. So again, the one thing I want to look at with this is, let's pretend this is just an equation like this. 1 fourth plus 1 third equals our, um, yeah, 5x over 12, whatever. Let's say I say, hey, five, solve for x. Now, again, under your understanding, couldn't you combine these two fractions? And then you would have a ratio equal to a ratio, which is a proportion, and then you could solve a proportion. Solve for x. Correct, right? You could do that. I mean, you'd get these and you'd get 7 twelfths equals 5x over 12. Since they have the same denominators, you could do 7 equals 5x, blah, blah, blah. Or you could cross multiply whatever you want to do and solve for x. That's possible. Or the easy way to do it is if you just get rid of your fractions, the math is much easier. So we say, well, what's the LCD here? The LCD here is, again, 12. So like I did in fractions, remember with fractions, I had to multiply the same number on the top and the bottom to produce equivalent fractions, right? Yes? You have to take, if you're producing a fraction, you have to multiply top and bottom to produce equivalent fractions. To produce equivalent equations, whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So I'm going to multiply 12 times everything. And when I do that, 12 times 1 fourth is 3. 12 times 1 third is 4. 12 times 5x over 12 equals 5x. And guess what? I get the same setup as I would if I did it the other way. Okay? Now, I prefer to do that method because I'm getting rid of the fractions. I don't want to do fraction operations. I'm just like you. So again, we learned last class period how to add rational expressions. Find the LCD and then get them together. But why go through all those steps, guys? Couldn't we just find the LCD here? Now here, the LCD is going to be a simple product of my two denominators, x plus 1 and x minus 1. So if I multiply everything, everything times x plus 1 times x minus 1, again, notice my denominators are always going to divide into that LCD, right? So x plus 1, x plus 1 is divided out. So I'm left with 2 times x minus 1. x minus 1 is divided out. So I'm left with x times x plus 1. And then here, I have 2 times x plus 1. Now, we can multiply this out, right? What's x plus 1 times x minus 1? Isn't that the same thing as x squared minus 1? So we could say 2 times x squared minus 1. Now, guys, I mean, this is, this is algebra 1 all over again, right? I mean, it's just combining like terms and then salt and getting them set equal to 0 since we know we're going to have a quadratic. So let's work it out. We get 2x minus 2 plus x squared plus x equals 2x squared minus 2. Well, since we have a quadratic, we know we want to get everything to the same side and set equal to 0. So I'll subtract everything. Minus x, minus x, minus 2x minus 2x, and then plus 2, plus 2. So I get 0 equals 2x squared minus x is x squared. Negative 2 plus 2 is going to be 0. And then x minus 2x is going to be minus 3x. Then I still need to solve, right? So I can apply the 0, uh, I can factor out an x, and then apply the 0 product property. So x equals 0, or x equals um, or x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3. Now remember, for rational expressions, we have to go back and check to make sure that they work. So we take our two solutions, 0 and 3, and we plug them back to our equation and make sure they don't make our denominator equal to 0. So you notice that the only numbers that make our answer 0 are negative 1 and 1. So these two solutions are not extraneous, right? So those are your two solutions. And again, remember, don't give me the solutions are negative 1 and 1, saying, oh, those are your extraneous. No, well, yeah, they are extraneous, but they're not solutions. So don't add them as the solutions. Okay? They are, yes, they are not undefined values, but they're not extraneous solutions because they're not even solutions. Okay? All right. Um, guys, we have a.